Well, it's happened. I have reached 2,000 subscribers, and it's thanks to all of you for showing your great support and subscribing to me in the first place. I'm actually late making this video. I actually reached 2,000 subscribers uh, about a month ago, maybe now. So I'm actually almost at 2,100 subscribers. So thank you all for subscribing and showing your support. Because I've reached 2,000, I wanted to make this special little video, which is gonna obviously be different than the rest. It's just a kind of a thank you video and to give you some information that you've been probably wanting to know for a while. Some of you might know what I'm talking about. That being where I'm from. Basically what state <laughs> or province. Mm. So for this video there's not gonna be much rock or interesting minerals to see besides the rock behind me here because I'm just gonna be thanking all of you and sharing some information and there's a big web on me probably when I jump down from that rock. However, for your interesting rock of the day, I do have this quartz crystal. So I have a couple videos in the making. There should be one shortly after this one where we dig these up. So you'll see the video in which I dug this up from the ground. This is the nicest quartz crystal I have ever found. So very happy to find this. So that video should be released shortly after this one, hopefully. I do have another video planned out, but that one's gonna take longer to release because uh, it's a longer video. Uh, filmed it over Labor Day, so it might not be out for a couple of weeks, especially with how busy I've been in school and work. So I'm um, trying to throw out videos as best I can. Now that I'm back in college, I'm not gonna be able to release as many videos within a certain amount of time, so it's gonna be longer stretches now, so. But if you wait around long enough, I'm sure there'll be a video that pops up. So now I'm gonna just take the rest of the time of this video for those who wanna stay and listen, I guess. I'm just gonna take some time and just uh, tell you some information about me, uh, some plans for the channel and why I made the channel in the first place, as well as asking your opinion, like what you guys would wanna see. Also, at the end of the video, I have a special offer to offer to anyone who's interested, so stick around for that. Well, one question I get a lot in person, especially when I'm at the school, at my college, uh, from other students, is they ask why I'm interested in geology, because for those of you who don't know, I'm majoring in geology in the college right now. So a lot of people ask why I'm into rocks, like, because they're not in the rocks and they think rocks are rocks, so they don't understand. So I, that's a typical question I get is why I'm interested in geology. To answer that question, I have to go a ways back into the past. So at a young age, I was interested in volcanoes, but I used to check out tons of books from the elementary school library, but I used to watch TV shows on it and as well as movies. Uh, one of my favorites was Dante's Peak, if any of you have seen that. Not a bad movie. Then eventually, like anything, that interest dies down and I get interested in something else. It wouldn't be until the 10th grade of my high school year that the thought of volcanics and volcanoes came back up in the mind because I was thinking about what I was gonna do after high school as far as uh, a job or a career. Now, originally I had plans to, after high school, apply for the railroad and go to work for the railroad. Because again, as a kid, I always was fascinated with trains. Again, that died down, but then at some point I realized, wait, I can work on trains with the railroad. But in the 10th grade, um, it came into my mind and I started thinking about volcanics. And it's weird how this happened. So exactly how it happened, I was just sitting around one day and then volcanoes just, boom, in my head. I started thinking about volcanoes and how cool they are again. Then I wondered, I wonder if there's a website where I can monitor the volcanics online live from home. Kind of a weird spontaneous thought, right? <laughs> so, but that's what I did. I hopped on my computer, just typed in volcanics live monitoring, something along those lines, and the USGS website popped up for volcanoes. And it gave me a whole map of like Mount Rainier, Mount Baker, Mount St. Helens. And I clicked Mount St. Helens and hit monitoring and all the seismometers popped up on the map and I clicked them and I could read the data. And I thought that was the coolest thing ever. So then that became my new thing. Almost every day I was checking stuff and I thought how cool it was. And basically I re, my interest in volcanoes came back, but this time it was more of, I could do this as a career path for a job. At that time I was only fascinated in volcanoes, just being able to monitor them. But when it comes to monitoring volcanoes, one of the things you monitor are earthquakes. So then shortly after, I became interested in earthquakes. But what causes earthquakes? Well, not only volcanoes, but faults. So then I became interested in volcanoes, earthquakes, and fault lines. Then I was learning about the different types of faults. So then when I became interested in faults, I wanted to see what faults were around my area. So I started looking up maps, which led to geologic maps. 
So I, I got a little bit of a taste of rock types. And back then I didn't care about rocks at all. I, I didn't want to know about rocks. But then I learned that I'm gonna to have to learn some rocks to be able to do volcanics. And if I wanted to go into volcanology, I had to first get a geology degree and if done with geology, you have to know rocks. And to me, that just seemed terrible. Like, I don't want to know about rocks. So eventually I started studying rocks. It started with volcanic rock. And then that led into minerals because certain minerals form in volcanic rocks and that's how you divert, uh, and that's how you tell the difference between them, which then led to intrusive rock. And then that's when it started to become really interesting because I started to recognize certain rock types that were near around my location. So I was able to actually go out when, on hikes and start realizing, wait, like, wait a minute, this rock outcrop, that's a granite intrusion. That means that magma from millions of years ago intruded into the area. So then I was starting to realize that being able to identify rocks, it starts to tell a story. I've always been interested in history. So, and geology is basically like reading history. So that eventually clicked. And before I knew it, I was studying all I could about geology. I actually studied for five years straight before I actually went into my first year of college. And basically that's how I got hooked on geology. <laughs> so there, now you know one more thing about me. <laughs> now to reveal one other thing about me. So, as promised, I said once I reached 2,000 subscribers, I would reveal where I'm from. Not my exact location or anything. I'm going to keep it a little vague, but at least you'll have an idea now. The reason why I was trying to keep it secretive in the first place is because uh, I actually had a couple people recognize my exact spots, and I was afraid about people. I was afraid of people finding my spots and uh, a couple other things, but now it's, eh, it's not that big of a deal now, so... I actually made two different polls, one on my community tab and one in a past video where I poll, where I made a poll asking what you guys thought I was from, where I thought, where you guys thought I was from. <laughs> now I can't talk, I need water. A lot of smoke in the air, it's getting to my head. <laughs> so the options were uh, British, no not British Columbia, Alberta, Canada, California, Montana, Washington, or Idaho. So uh, what is that? Four? That's four, right? Montana, Washington, Idaho. Five, five, right, okay, so fifth, so in fifth place was California. Um, no one really voted for California, surprisingly, uh, but I'm not from California. So on to the next one, and fourth place, the fourth option was Montana. So I am not from Montana. However, when I first started my channel, if you guys noticed, I was wearing a Montana hat. Uh, it said Montana on there, and there was a lot of people asking where I was from, and I was wondering if people were going to catch on that since my hat says Montana, I must be from Montana. Uh, wasn't trying to throw you guys off there, but later on I was kind of wondering that probably maybe could trick up a couple of you, but it didn't seem to work. <laughs> so I'm not from California or Montana. So then in third place, I believe was Washington. So I am not from Washington. However, I go to Washington often enough for my prospecting and making videos. So Washington is a place that I am in quite often. All right, so now it comes down to Idaho or British Columbia, not British Columbia, Alberta, Canada. Now, this was surprising. Uh, I actually had a, one or two people say I have a Canadian accent. Um, okay, <laughs> I don't think I do, but maybe I do. I'm pretty sure I don't have a Canadian accent since I'm not from Canada, and that was actually the first place option that people were, the, the first option that people chose, the one of the bigger, biggest percentage. Most people in the poll thought I was from Alberta, Canada, for some reason, and apparently I must have an accent according to some, according to some people I have an accent, so uh, I don't think I do, but I mean I've gone to Canada often enough, uh, like once a year for skiing, up at Panorama, if you guys know where that's at. Great ski resort. Been the Radium Hot Sp I've been the Radium Hot Springs too in Banff. That leaves the second most chosen position, which was Idaho. So I am from the state of Idaho. That's where I was born and raised. And that's where I currently live for now. Where exactly in Idaho? I'll let you know. I'm in I'm actually from North Idaho, and I live around the Spokane, Coeur d'Alene, Moscow, Sandpoint area right around there in North Idaho. So now you know where I'm from. So some of you have actually recognized the places that I've been to, so now you know that I'm a local in the area. So that's why you recognize the locations, because 
I've been around. <laughs> so for those who watch me that live around here, now they'll probably be on the lookout for me. So I'm gonna have to start hiding. Once again, thank you for all the subscribers and support that you guys have given me. I didn't think I would reach this far with the channel. So thanks again for all the support that you guys have given me. I didn't think the channel would come this far this quick. And my original plan for the channel was to, of course, do geology stuff, but also throw in some other things. That's why I called it Geoforge, because geo means earth. There's a lot of things that involve the earth, and then foraging is like blacksmithing and, you know, like making stuff, crafting things. So my original plan was to do geology stuff, but also to do videos where I make things. I already did one video where I made mead, the dandelion mead, which you can go check out right up here in the corner. But eventually, uh, if I can get to it, I do want to incorporate some blacksmithing. That's something I've always wanted to do for many years now. It just seems like a really cool thing to do. What would be really cool to do is if I could find iron ore, smelt my own ore, and then forge a tool or something out of the iron ore. So then I could do the whole process of collecting and mining the ore, smelting it down, and then making a tool out of it. I think that would be amazing. I do have plans, uh, hopefully once the fire season dies down and they allow burning again because the fires around here are terrible. We actually have one of the worst air qualities around currently from all of the wildfire smoke. But once the wildfires burn down, well, go out, or the, the, once the fire hazard's down, we'll say, I do plan on smelting or trying to smelt copper ore. So uh, for those of you who've seen it, I went to a copper mine and I'll actually just tell you what it was. It was the Loon Lake Copper Mine, located in eastern Washington. So for those of you who stuck, stuck around this long, now you know one of the locations. And I'll give you one more, actually. See, it pays. It pays to uh, stick around. <laughs> so this quartz crystal is not from any of my uh, private spots. It's actually from a public dig site. It's been known about for like 40 or so years. It is the... It is the Solo Creek dig site, also located in eastern Washington, near the North Idaho border. So now you have two locations, one to get quartz crystals and one to get copper. So there you go. So once again, thank you all for supporting my channel, and thank you all to my subscribers. Um, obviously, I couldn't do it without you because what's the point of making videos if no one's watching them? So that's why I make them. So again, I want to thank all 2,000 or over 2,000 of my subscribers for following me and showing your support really means a lot because that's what keeps this channel going what keeps me wanting to make more videos because I'm glad to know people like my content and like to watch it because without that, what am I doing? <laughs> Just making videos for no one to watch. So anyways, I hope you all have a good day and if you stuck around this long, if you remember, I said I had a special offer to offer to you guys at the end of the video. So if you stuck along, if you stuck around this long, here it is. So I'm sure all of you know what a weather station is. You can set them up at your house, you can set them up in the woods, and that basically tells you the weather at your the area you're interested in, at your house or up in the woods. So you can get an app on your phone and you can see what the weather is doing in that exact spot. Well, there's something else that's similar to that, but instead of weather that you're monitoring, you're instead monitoring seismic signals, earthquakes. So there is this company that makes affordable seismometers. Now this company is called Raspberry Shake. A link to the website will be down below. They have a couple different options of seismometers that you can buy. They have uh, simpler basic ones which are less money and then they have more advanced ones that are of course going to be more money. But you can monitor earthquakes with these machines and they're only about this big. They're not huge and all you need is an internet connection and power source and you're pretty much ready to go. I own two seismometers. I own both of them are Model 4D. I was a Kickstarter for them. Uh, they were getting money to fund their new model and I participated so I was able to get two for almost the price of one. Now I have recorded a lot of earthquakes on this machine. It's very impressive. I've recorded a 3.0 magnitude earthquake that was 50 miles away. I recorded a 4.0 that was a couple hundred miles away down in southern Idaho. Easily recorded the 6.5 magnitude that we had down near Chalice, Idaho. It's recorded large earthquakes as far as Alaska, and even larger earthquakes as far as Chile or even around Russia. So depending on the size of the earthquake and where it happens, the seismic signals can actually travel from halfway across the globe to my house and record on my seismometer. It's awesome. So these things 
are very proficient and they work great. Now I've been wanting to monitor earthquakes for quite a while, so when I found out about this company I was very excited because I live on what is now believed to be an active fault, and I, I'm just going to say it is an active fault. I believe, anyways, that's my opinion. But we don't have really any seismometers around here to monitor it, so that's why I want to get some seismometers. And lucky enough for me, a couple of miles away is another individual who has a Raspberry Shake. The reason why I know that is because when you buy a Raspberry Shake, you can hook it up on your Wi-Fi your wi internet, and you can provide the data from your live seismometer your Raspberry Shake, and you can put it online for anyone in the world to see. On their website, they have a station view, so you can see all the Raspberry Shake stations that are currently up on the live stream, or not the live stream, but on the web, the ones that have been chosen to be put on the web, you can see all their locations. Now, you don't have to broadcast your seismometer onto the web if you don't want to, but it definitely makes it helpful for those who are wanting to find earthquakes. What's cool about these is I have actually recorded earthquakes that were not picked up by professional agencies like the USGS. Mainly the reason is for that is because they're so small that they can only be recorded locally and the nearest seismometer is like 70 miles away from here so it's not going to pick those small earthquakes up. But we did have one earthquake that actually shook people's homes and they heard it like an explosion. So for hours, people were reporting to the news media that they felt an earthquake or an explosion. A lot of people recorded it. A lot of people said it was an explosion. So a lot of people believed it was an earthquake, but the a certain university, I won't say, a university professional said that there was no evidence of an earthquake, and the USGS also said there was no evidence of an earthquake. However, there was an earthquake several miles away, but that happened a prior two or three hours before what everyone felt. When this happened, I immediately went onto my Raspberry Shake seismometer, checked the data, and of course, it was obvious that we did indeed have an earthquake. The seismic signal was right there. Unmistakable. So I knew there was an earthquake, and I was informing people that there was an earthquake long before it was actually reported that there was an earthquake. It actually took six hours for the USGS to actually confirm the existence of that earthquake and it came out to be in a magnitude 2.8. The reason for that was the aftershocks that were occurring in southern Idaho blurred out that earthquake because the aftershocks were popping up on the seismometers, but then that one in north Idaho, actually that one in eastern Washington came up and it got blurred in there so they didn't see it. And that is why it is important to have seismometers and all over the place so earthquakes like that don't go unnoticed so if you're interested in getting one i highly recommend it it could make a great gift to someone as well uh, i'll have a link for that down in the description but if you use my code you will get a five percent discount uh, i can't remember the code off the top of my head but it'll be in the description as well on the screen right here so use that code and you can get a five percent discount on any purchase on the web store and that five percent actually goes to the company but also that 5% also goes to me. So by me helping you get a 5% discount, you're also helping me. So by using that code, you can get a 5% discount and you can buy yourself a Raspberry Shake seismometer. Highly recommend it, it's awesome. Again, thank you to all my subscribers and supporters for sticking around. More great things to come in the future and I hope to see you all in the next video. You all take care.